there's the river to explore, there's the forest to explore, there's the, the you know the, the local villages and the culture. Fishing in the Gambia, absolutely brilliant. Of course, we also have one of the most beautiful rivers you can find, and one of the most navigable rivers, suitable for all types of sports. All we need is investors. The Gambia River has been the historic highway in the country. Navigable most of its length, it offers tourism opportunities as well as the means to transport goods and people into the interior. At its mouth is the long-established deep-water port of Banjul, with its modern and efficient cargo handling capabilities bustling with shipments to and from Europe and the Americas. The administration of the port is much easier to deal with than, than some other countries where you might have freight waiting for paperwork to clear for months, where in Gambia it generally takes days. Another unique advantage of the Gambia, the language. The Gambian fabric which we know that we make it ourselves. Welcome to the paradise of the Gambia. I have traveled to many countries and decided I'd like to do a business of some sort in tourism for many, many years before I found this area. Being English speaking, being the laws that are similar to, to England, uh, makes me feel totally comfortable in, in, in that way. Dealing with shopkeepers, taxi drivers, whatever, they all speak English. It just makes business much easier to do. In the Gambia, nearly all children of school age now attend class. For adults, vocational training abounds, and the University of the Gambia offers advanced studies in economics and management. They love to learn, they love any kind of external stimuli that, that they get a chance to kind of be part of, they want to know, and it's, you don't get that in Europe or America. Demonstrate on how to send... Our first batch, we had 13 students that were registered, and now we get a minimum of 50 each time it goes out. In fact, we have to turn people away. They have a want to learn it, and I think if that desire is there, then people are going to learn anything. So people come in, they have a big desire to learn it, and they really work hard at it, and they follow the, you know, the instructors, and they get it. We are doing quite a lot in the education sector to ensure that there is availability of skill level. We pay you for providing education. We are the only ones that are giving free education for girls without regard to the parents' political affiliation. On a continent where women are often second class citizens, Gambia stands out as an exception. Actively advancing women's rights and including them at all levels of government and business. Today we have a project which is unprecedented with its gender orientation. The contractor, a woman myself, the consultant and engineer, a woman, Mary Sengor, and the lawyer who negotiated this contract, a woman, Miss Ida Drame. The sky is the limit for women in the Gambia. They are recognized for their significant contributions to the success of the Gambian economy, an economy based on quality. We took first in Guinness quality. We are first in Africa. Everybody is proud. A small place like Goodwood taking place in Africa. It's a big crowd. Pride is no stranger to the skilled and motivated Gambian workforce. They know their job. They are honest and trustworthy. You can depend on them. Gambians understand that it's a competitive world. Have to make sure that you are always a step ahead of the competition. Otherwise, investors have choice. In 2004, the World Economic Forum ranked the Gambia as Africa's sixth most competitive economy and first among the West African countries. We are one of the smallest countries in Africa. And we are ranked one of the best in Africa in terms of uh, transparency, in terms of the fight against corruption, in terms of political stability and good governance. Small, it is a great advantage because it is easy to organize logistics, for example, for investors. GIFSA, the Gambian Investment Promotion and Free Zone Agency, is the one-stop shop for streamlining the process for setting up a business. We established this agency to deal with all matters relating to attracting and establishing an investment in the country. Everything will be done ranging from land issues, immigration issues, licensing issues, and even if you are conducting a feasibility study. Because it's so small and the government is so small, we can you know, talk to the top people 
in any department and, you know, get a final answer on, on any question we have. The Gambian Chamber of Commerce and Industry is actively working with the government to promote private sector involvement in the future development of the country. In the last three years, we have heavily invested in the Gambia and have modernized all our banking premises and also the processing systems to world standards. It's easy to provide backup infrastructure service for industry. Communications, technology and highways are bringing even remote corners of the Gambia within reach of the world. The infrastructure all around here is growing. It's grown in the Gambia, it's grown in Senegal. They're building roads all the way through Senegal. This particular road is going to go all the way up to Gibraltar. Daily flights touch down on new runways at the Banjul International Airport. Banjul is one of the most modern and well-equipped airports in uh, Africa. But in the sub-region, we have the longest runway. So that's why NASA is using it as their landing site. There are certain countries, you have to drive 1,000 kilometers from the hinterland to access certain facilities. That is not the case with Gambia. Modernization is everywhere. Cell phones and cyber cafes are just a few of the signs of a country wired for business. The growth in IT in this country puts us in touch with the world and opens up all those horizons for us. From any computer terminal, whether in your house or whether in a cyber cafe, you can get information, whether it's for education, personal, whatever. From vocational skills to healthcare, education and farming, NGO involvement in developing the country is invaluable. The government has created the enabling environment as well to encourage organizations from the outside to come and participate in national development. We have reached a point where communities quite clearly know what their needs are. Okay, so the shift is, is, is about uh, the communities taking a central role in articulating their own needs and taking uh, center stage in addressing those needs. You can have resources, you can have natural resources in abundance, but if you don't have a committed leadership and a dedicated people, you cannot get anywhere. This, I think, is our greatest strength. What better place can we live uh, in West Africa, better than Gambia? Hustle free, people are proud uh, but friendly enough. People are peaceful. In fact, I say the most peaceful country between uh, West Africa. This is one country also where you find tourists walking in the streets up to 4 a.m., 6 a.m. There are good schools there. I know people who have come from the States and, and their children.